Welcome everybody. Good evening. I know we had some technical difficulties getting on here this evening, so I appreciate all of your patience. Um, tonight we are talking about the sweet dangers of sugar and breaking your sugar addiction. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jen Jay. I'm an advanced holistic nutritionist. I have a strong focus in my practice on women's hormone health and family nutrition with a plant-based um, specialization in all of that. So I have a very, very strong belief in the healing power of food, um, particularly as it relates to whole food, plant-based nutrition, and how adding more healthy plant-based foods to your diet can really help you um, overcome some of your health struggles and really level up in the way that you feel every day. I also hold a bachelor's degree in psychology. I am now officially a published author and I'm a mom of one. Now, um, oftentimes when we think about food addictions, uh, we don't generally think of addictions in the sense of something very dangerous or something very severe. We I mean, think a lot of us kind of joke about our sugar addictions, particularly, um, or our addiction to Lay's chips or <laughs> our addiction to uh, salty, crunchy foods or something, right? And most of us kind of laugh it off when we talk about how we have very little willpower about something uh, in our diet. Um, but what we don't recognize is that that is actually a true addiction um, in the same way that you could be addicted to drugs or alcohol, to gambling, um, to all kinds of things. Even our cell phones um, are, you know, cause for addictions. And so um, laughing about our addiction to food is actually kind of an avoidance tactic and, and our ability to not recognize what's going on. So food addictions are just as serious as any other type of addiction. Um, they lead to obesity, overeating, diabetes, heart disease, and a whole vast range of other health-related symptoms. So things like you might get more muscular or joint pain, so high levels of inflammation, of course, um, eating the wrong types of foods, which generally are the kinds that we are addicted to, um, could even feed or grow certain types of cancers, um, autoimmune diseases, gut issues, mood and mental health concerns as well. So food addictions in themselves are actually a very serious thing to address. And the reason that we fall into these traps of food addictions, particularly when it comes to sugar, uh, is that we get this trigger in our brain. And so we have this area of our brain that um, releases dopamine. And dopamine is like this feel-good hormone. This is a hormone in our body that has this feeling energetic, has this feeling happy, feel us, has this feeling on this really high level of life. Okay. And so sugar actually has been shown in the brain to release dopamine in the body. And so when we consume um, large amounts of sugar or uh, certain types of sugar, we actually have this release of dopamine. And so we feel good. We actually like mentally, emotionally, physically, we have this high in our body. Um, and what happens is when we have this sustained large amount of sugar over time, we actually dull the regulators in our brain that release this dopamine. And so what it means is our sensors habituate to certain levels of sugar. And so in order to feel that high again, we need more of it to actually trigger that sensor to release that dopamine and have us feeling good. Then the same way as, uh, you know, uh, somebody struggling with alcoholism or drug addiction would require more and more of that substance in order to feel the same effects that they might have felt in the beginning of starting that substance. So sugar actually does trigger the same area of our brain that any other addiction would. Um, and so knowing that that is in play when it comes to our sugar um, and knowing how dangerous that can actually be can help you start to recognize that if you do think you have a food addiction or particularly a sugar addiction, that that is something that um, there is a biological process happening in your body that may actually be a little bit beyond what you think you can control. And what happens here is we actually have this false energy level. And that's because our body requires sugar in its basic form for energy. It requires sugar 
carbohydrates as a fuel source. Now, in saying that, there are, of course, different kinds of sugar. So we have complex sugars, which would be things like fruits and vegetables and starches and whole grains, and even things like beans and lentils actually have a complex sugar source and whole, whole grains like um, you know, bulgur and brown rice and whole wheat even. And the reason these are different than say a simple sugar is that these are a complex molecule that still contains starches and fiber that requires our body extra work to break it down into a simple sugar molecule. But when we consume added sugars, refined sugars, white carbohydrates like white breads, white pastas, um, white rice, these lack those starches and um, fiber molecules that would slow and steady release that sugar into your body. So instead we have this small boost of energy because we have this easily accessible sugar in our blood system that our body can burn through. And what happens is we actually burn through it very quickly because we don't have anything to stabilize that. And so we get a crash. So it's this false source of sense of energy and that leaves us feeling sluggish and lightheaded. And oftentimes a lot of us even experience headaches and migraines. So if you find mid afternoon that you're starting to feel really weird and off center, you got a headache coming in. This is often a result of something you've eaten earlier in the day, probably around lunchtime, um, that has given you that full sense of energy and that you're now crashing down off of. Now, um, sugar also causes an overstimulation of our brain, which can cause us to be jumpiness, uh, or to have jumpiness or have anxiety. So oftentimes this overstimulation is um, falsely recognized as energy or, or excitement. So we think that we're really excited, you know, if we look at children and when we give them a chocolate bar, I think, you know, I, it's not uncommon for parents to laugh about how kids at a party um, are all jumped up on sugar, you know, after the cake and the pinata and all of the treats and everything. And they think that they're full of energy and excitement. And really what's happening is they've actually had this massive physical overstimulation of both their brain and their body. And that causes um, them and even adults to actually be more jumpy, more anxious, more on edge, um, which is why we see the other side of that, where when a child and us as well are coming down off of that overstimulation, we're cranky, we're moody, we're super tired, we're lethargic, and we're more likely, particularly children, to have emotional outbursts. Um, and so what happens is our body actually habituates to this response as well. So we require more of that sugar and more of that stimulus in order to release that dopamine for those same effects. So it creates this overstimulation in our brain. And most of us don't really think about how sugar actually affects the brain. You know, when we think about sugar, we think about, you know, what's it doing inside of our stomach? What's it doing inside of our digestive system? Um, how's it affecting my energy levels? How's it affecting things like diabetes? These are kind of the, the more well-taught and well-known things about sugar. And so we kind of totally overestimate the power that it actually has over our brain. And that's why I wanted to leave with this this evening so that you could really have an understanding of what's happening in different areas of your body when we consume high levels of sugar. Now, some of the dangers of actually being addicted to sugar is that we are more likely to experience things like migraines. Um, and so what happens here is, you know, as we habituate to those certain levels, our body requires more of it in order to feel good to and to keep away those migraines. And so that migraine is oftentimes a result of your body kind of detoxing off of that sugar. And in most of us as a natural response to avoid pain is we'll actually feed back in to the exact thing that is causing us pain to begin with, just because we want to avoid the pain. And so, um, you know, I actually have a lot of clients that I work with who do get migraines when, because they drink a lot of pop. They like, like Dr. Pepper or Pepsi, Coca-Cola. Those are some of their favorite pops, um, which happen to be highly loaded with refined and added sugars. And what happens is, you know, if they don't have one of those drinks in the day, they end up with a headache. And so in order to treat their headache, they actually treat it by drinking a can of pop. Um, and so what's happening here is, you know, we're not only increasing the cycle and the chances of us having those 
symptoms of being of um, of our of, of that food addiction and that sugar addiction, but we're reinforcing that cycle so that we keep doing it in order to avoid the pain that comes from not doing it. Hypertension is another really big one. So we have um, higher levels of fat deposits in our blood when we consume high levels of sugar. It's converted into fat um, molecules. Those fat molecules do build up in our um, our cardiovascular system. So we end up with plaque on the insides of our veins and our arteries, and that leads to hypertension, right? So higher blood pressure, more work on the heart for our heart to actually pump out the blood that it needs every single day. Um, and even things like lower circulation. So you, you're more likely to have cold hands and feet and just all these kind of weird random things that wouldn't actually correlate with eating sugar actually does show up in life when we consume it on a regular or high basis. Then we run into metabolic issues. And this is the one that most of us are quite familiar with is diabetes. Um, but more than just diabetes is, you know, maybe we're just looking at insulin resistance um, where our body doesn't create enough insulin. Like we are literally habituating to the levels of insulin. And so we have to uh, either create more of it or our body doesn't create enough of it. Um, but in addition to that, you know, we're running into other metabolic issues. So things like um, digestive systems that are failing or an unbalanced microbiota in our gut system. I was actually reading about a study today in Ireland, uh, or sorry, in, um, not Ireland, in the country. Um, but anyways, the study was showing that certain types of sweeteners in our diet are actually causing an unbalance of microbiota in our gut system, which is perpetuating a cycle of sickness and unwellness in our bodies. Um, so in knowing that, you know, having all of these poor sugar choices or poor sugar options on a regular basis, our body never really has the chance to actually, you know, slow down from it or to actually feel better or to get that load off of it. So it's always working steady hard against all of the effects that's happening when we're bringing sugar into our body. So um, I want to ask you this, did you know, and this is probably, pro probably pretty uh, surprising to you and yet probably not, right? It's, it's probably a no brainer, but also kind of scary when we really look at the numbers. So the average person in North America consumes 22 to 30 teaspoons of added sugar every day. Um, and so while that doesn't seem like a lot, or maybe you, you don't know what that actually looks like, um, the recommended maximum amount that we should be eating is six and nine. Wow, so three to four times the recommended amount is what we eat on an average day um, of sugar, of added sugars in our diet. Now, to give you some context of what that looks like, uh, basically we have a healthy allowance of about 100 grams of sugar in our body every single day, but that 100 grams of sugar includes all of our fruits, all of our vegetables, all of our carbohydrates, all of our plant-based proteins, like all of that sugar, all those sugar molecules that come in beans and lentils and, and all of that. And so if we are tying up those hundred grams with 88 to 120 of them from added sugars, we are really, really missing the opportunity to add some really healthy sugars to our body that are actually going to not just fuel us and have us, you know, having good energy, but actually help our body fight against these types of sugars, these other types of sugars, these added refined sugars that we're putting into our body. So I know the average person, probably if they're ordering like a double double, if you're here in Canada, um, a double double has, I think it's at least two teaspoons, but I actually think it's more, I think they use tablespoons. Um, so just for an FYI, like a teaspoon and a tablespoon, it's a difference of three. So there's three teaspoons in every tablespoon. So if you're putting, you know, two to, to six teaspoons of sugar in each coffee that you're drinking, that's quite a bit. And then factor in the fact that also milk and cream contain sugar. So it adds up very quickly. And that's just probably in your morning coffee that you started before you got to work. So um, it can very, very, very quickly add up when we consider that sugar is found in so many things. Um, so things like our coffees and lattes. And I know actually um, 
some information was shared earlier in the week in our JP Hill community about the uh, amount of sugar in certain types of food, things like donuts and things like like really decked out lattes with the whipped cream and everything like you know several hundred grams of sugar are sitting in maybe like a large latte and that's really really scary when you know we only have a hundred grams of sugar allowance really for a healthy body of natural sugars <laughs> never mind all the added ones um so the, so also finding it in pre-made juices oftentimes a pre-made juice contains very little actual uh nutrients from real food, real juice. Oftentimes it's um, you know, synthetic and added with sugar to increase the flavor and improve the, the chances of you buying it. And because sugar is addictive, you are more likely to buy it if you have a positive experience drinking it. Um, so if you are going to drink juices, make sure that they are literally 100% pure juice and that there's nothing else in them. Check the ingredients label. It should only have fruits and veggies listed on it. That's it. If it has anything more than that, steer clear. Frozen dinners are another really big one that you can find sugars in. Um, Pre-made health drinks as well. So there's a lot of drinks on the market that even things like smoothies. So pre-made smoothie drinks have a lot of added sugars in them. Um, even, you know, buying smoothies in certain stores, oftentimes it's just a sugar syrup that's flavored to the flavor you've ordered and not actual real food going into that smoothie. Um, so if you're going to order a smoothie somewhere, definitely go to a smoothie bar where they are making you your smoothie fresh right in front of you with real whole food and not just from a little slot machine behind the counter, okay? Um, yogurts are another really, really big source of added sugars. It's not uncommon to see one small cup of yogurt contain anywhere between six and 15 grams of added sugar. And that's for half to three quarters of a cup. That's huge. That's a lot of sugar um, for a very small portion of food. And then your breakfast cereals are another really, really big one. And this is one that honestly, truly for me, scares me a lot. Um, and the reason for that is because breakfast cereal is a standard breakfast option in almost every household for children. And when we are starting our kids off, First thing in the day with, you know, 15, 20, 22 grams of added sugars and very other, like very few other nutrients, it is not setting them up for success in school, for success in learning, for success in health, for success in managing the way that they feel every day for their moods, their energy levels. Um, and it also sets them up for poor choices later in the day when it comes to their nutrition because their body is craving that constant reinforcement for that dopamine effect okay so um steering clear of breakfast cereals or choosing ones that are really low or have none uh added sugars in them there are a couple of brands on the market that you could take a look generally you're going to find them in your health food aisles um, but even still then check the labels because even some of those still do contain added sugars um, hidden behind labels saying whole grains uh, organic all kinds of different labels on the front of the package where you're going to want to look as the nutritional information make sure that it's and the ingredients that there are no added sugars to that cereal if you're choosing to use cereal in the mornings or at any time of your day now Quitting sugar is, of course, what we all want to do um, and what we all most definitely struggle with. And, and I explained to you why, like, it's not just um, it's not just a, a laughing you know, joke that we're addicted to sugar. It's actually a true mental, physical, biological addiction that our bodies are going through. So quitting sugar is, for many people, just as intense as going through any sort of uh, rehabilitation program, any sort of detox program. Um, and you are most definitely, <laughs> depending on how much sugar you have accumulated in your body, going to go through some stages that are not very comfortable. But as with any addiction, getting through those stages and past that is where you really start to feel better and notice a whole load taken off of your body that you didn't really know you were carrying. It's almost like you've been carrying around, you know, a backpack of boulders for so long that you're so used to it. You don't even know it's there anymore. And then when you take it off, you're just like, oh, it just feels so light and so good. Right. So you, so a lot of us don't even realize how badly we feel 
until we get rid of it. So let's talk about what that looks like. What do those stages look like? Number one, removing the known sugars from your diet. And this is the hardest part of it, okay? Knowing where they come from, knowing what they look like, knowing how to find them, knowing what they are. Um, so artificial sugars, added sugars, refined sugars, processed foods, uh, with greater than five grams per serving. So generally, if it contains less than five grams per serving, even of an added sugar, you're doing okay. It could probably, you know, you could do better, but it's a generally a good place to start of making sure you're getting less than five grams of sugar per serving, okay? Well, white flour is another really big one. And oftentimes white flour products contain more than five grams of sugar in them. So staying clear of those. Now, the scary thing is that sugar hides behind over 50 names. That's scary. So <laughs> um, it's not something that we can all, you know, recognize right away. And most of us don't have those 50 names stored away in a brain. I truthfully don't even. I kind of have an idea of what to look for because I know kind of the science behind how sugar is labeled, but most of us don't know that information. So your best bet, these are some of the names that you probably recognize in a lot of your standard stuff that you buy, but your best bet is to stick to real whole food. Choose fruits and vegetables. Choose foods that are in their most natural state as possible. Choose things that haven't been processed and if they have been processed take a look at that ingredient list and make sure sugar is not on there it doesn't need to be food itself is so incredibly delicious and so sweet when you allow your body the chance to actually enjoy it without the interference of added sugars so some of these names we're used to are white sugar dextrose brown sugar glucose fructose and some of us think oh fructose that's a natural sugar <laughs> yeah but it's still missing components like fiber and starches that slow that regulation of absorption. Okay? Cane sugar, barley, malt, high fructose corn syrup. Stay away from that one. That one is awful. It is so bad, so scary. Um, and in so many ways, and if you don't believe me, go look it up. <laughs> the dangers of high fructose corn syrup and you will see study after study after study. It's very scary. Um, palm sugar, rice syrup, even lactose. Um, even lactose, uh, which is a natural sugar from milk uh, can have some effects on our body because there's no fiber in there to slow that, how our body absorbs that. So your next stage of quitting sugar is the detox process. And this is the scary part of it. So the first part of it is hard, trying to figure out where sugar is showing up in your diet, um, how to you know read those labels, how to choose healthier options. But the scary part of it is the detox process, because this is where you do have to be stronger than what's happening in your body. And you have to be ready to not feel your best because, you know, you're retraining your body for what good feels like, right? Getting rid of that fake um, exuberance and that fake high and we're replacing it with real life. Okay. So, um, Here's a couple of ways that you can actually support your body in this process because this is crucial. This is the key part in managing your sugar cravings, addictions, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're at with sugar in your life. Okay? Detoxing is something our body does naturally every single day. You don't need crazy juice diets you don't need anything like that. Our body naturally detoxes, but it does so when it is supported with the best nutrition possible. So it removes buildup from our system. So from our liver, our digestive system, our guts, um, our adrenal glands, like even all the different um, hormone regulating glands in our body of our endocrine system, they all help our body detox efficiently. But this requires solid nutrition. You cannot be just winging it in this process. You have got to put really good nutrition into your body during this process. You've got to have plenty of crucial vitamins and minerals. And this is going to do a couple of things. This helps our body work at optimal performance in order to help it detox efficiently from those added sugars. But it also helps us minimize how we feel during this detox process. It kind of helps you lower that detox feeling so that you don't feel sluggish and you're not dealing with too many headaches because your body is getting real nutrients that it needs in order to feel good. And what you're also doing in that, this point 
is you are retraining your body to crave the good foods. You are putting in those really good nutrients that your body needs um, and that your body really does crave, but inter but you know that craving gets interfered with by added sugars. So this detox process, unfortunately, can take anywhere between you know, a week to four months to actually fully reset your system to being in control of the way that you feel around sugar, to being able to making healthy decisions, to be able to say no to a certain type of dessert, to be able to feel in control when you walk down a sugar aisle, to you know go to a family holiday and not feel like you have to eat everything on the dessert table or to, or to even pass it up or to be able to have one piece and stop at that. Okay. So unfortunately that's the most scary part of it, <laughs> but there's hope for you. And I'm going to show you why. So, um, you know, a lot of us think of when we think of detoxing, we think of this like crazy diet and we think of you know, juice cleanses and all these weird uh, fads that are out there and just, you know, all this extreme uh, extremity. And this is not going to do us any good. It's not. So we don't have, when we're not feeding our body that good nutrition, our body doesn't have what it needs in order to actually shut out the, that toxic overload from the sugar. So cleansing our body versus dieting is the goal when it comes to overcoming your sugar addiction. So not nothing fad, nothing restrictive, nothing crazy, just really good nutrition every single day with intention in order to help your body work your way through that process. Now, of course, the stage three of quitting is the side effects. And this is the not so fun part of it, but um, it doesn't last forever. So <laughs> you can help mitigate some of these side effects, of course, like I said, by stage two, helping your body detox properly and efficiently. So um, oftentimes, he you know, headaches are a really big one. Headaches and migraines are a really big side effect of coming off of sugar. Um, moodiness is another one because our body is kind of re-regulating what it means to be happy and what it means to feel neutral. Uh, fatigue, low energy, because again, we've kind of been operating on these fake high levels. Um, anxiety is something, so we tend to get more anxious, more nervous, a little bit more snappy around people around us. Um, maybe even have a lower patience level <laughs> while you're going through this process. Um, Changes in sleep patterns, you might notice your sleep is disrupted because you're not feeling the greatest, um, or you might actually notice you're starting to sleep better because your body is actually <laughs> regulating the way that it should. Um, more cravings, of course, is expected uh, as a part of going through that detox process. It's expected and normal for you to want to just give back into that uh, the easy way. So this isn't an easy process, and I'm sorry to say that it's not, but um, that's the truth of it. And then memory and focus issues could be something that you might go through too. So some brain fog or um, just difficulty concentrating might be some things that you're going through. So the best thing you can do is support your body with really good nutrition, drink a lot of water to help your body flush out everything that it's going through, focusing on your self-care and your sleep, like all of those basics of really healthy living is going to help you get through this process. And when you get to a point where you're no longer feeling those cravings, it is very easy for you to actually just say no or to walk away from it or to have the better control because you know what your body can handle and what it can't. So a couple other tips of getting through a sugar craving um, is have alternatives. So have healthy alternatives in your life that you can turn to when you have food cravings. So, um, you know, so fruit is a really great option having some healthy snack options so if you like um if you like pudding there's some healthy pudding options available um if you like candy you know having some frozen red grapes is a fantastic alternative to candy because they are just so sweet something about freezing them actually bursts the molecule the sugar molecules and makes them sweeter so if you haven't tried that i highly encourage it um, give that a try freeze your red grapes try eating them like that delicious don't give them to children like that of course um, cut them <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous but definitely a family favorite here in my house um, smelling instead of tasting. I forget the percentage, but a huge percentage of our 
eating experience is actually related to how we smell our food. Pretty cool. And so what that means is you can oftentimes get a very similar emotional satisfaction from smelling a food as you would of uh, eating it. So if you're tempted or there's something sweet around, instead of tasting it, just have a really good smell. Just breathe it all in, enjoy it, you know, differentiate all the flavors and the, the smells that you can actually identify and savor that and then move on. <laughs> um, drinking infused water is another great one. So adding, you know, some fruits to your water or herbs like mint are really great for curbing cravings but also just making sure that you brought that water intake is gonna help curb, curb cravings anyways. Eating plenty of green vegetables. Green vegetables are loaded with micronutrients. So when I say green vegetables, I mean things like broccoli, kale, um, Swiss chard, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, like all kinds of greens that you could possibly be eating, eat lots of them. <laughs> they contain so many micronutrients that are going to help your body overcome cravings. Things like chromium, things we don't really think of, you know, that we don't, we wouldn't find in like a glass of milk or something. Um, so eating these greens not only help us overcome cravings, but they help our body detox really well. Um, they're really well known for being those detox vegetables, hence why everybody does like a green juice detox, right? Um, <laughs> there's some actual validation behind that, and that's those nutrients actually do help our body. Um, some other ways that you can get around those cravings and, and help yourself through that process, go for a walk. It doesn't have to be food related. You don't always have to be putting something in your mouth to satisfy um, an emotional or psychological or physical need. Go for a walk, get some fresh air, phone a friend, have a bubble bath, do something different, break that thought pattern and cycle that you're stuck in. Um, and then the last thing is you definitely want to surround yourself with support. So you need to have people around you who support you, who are willing to help you through that process, um, who are doing it with you, possibly. That's the most fun part is when you actually have people going through the motions with you, because this is an everyday thing. It's not uh, a one and done, right? You are always going to be presented with opportunity to indulge in sugar foods. And so it's not a one done, one and done. <laughs> you might come over the addiction side of it, but there's always going to be opportunity. So having a support system around you of people who can you know, relate to your struggles, know your pain points, encourage you when you're feeling weak and like celebrate you when you're doing awesome. That's a big thing can really help you stick to that goal of making healthier choices when it comes to sugar. So what does that look like? What would it look like if you could actually, in a very simple way, use all six of these um, tips for easing that transition? What would that look like? And so I asked you, are you ready to break your sugar addiction? The Shred 10 is a fantastic way of doing that. The Shred 10 literally walks you through the whole process um, of exactly what I talked about. It helps you add more fruits and veggies to your diet every day so that you are supporting that natural detox, drinking plenty of water, taking care of yourself through uh, self-care, sleep, stress reduction, exercising, getting outdoors, reducing refined sugars, all in a lifestyle-based um, format in a super easy lifestyle-based format. So what that means is that you're not building, you're not, you know, you're not doing restrictions. You're not doing anything crazy. You are literally taking on small actions every day, whichever actions you can commit to that help you get closer to your health goals. And in this case tonight, we're talking about sugar. So I'm assuming you're all here because you need some help with the sugar in your life. I, I think I'd be wrong if I wasn't saying that. So, um, and I'm the same way, guys, like I, if sugar didn't put me in the hospital every month, um, I, I would have a really big problem. I'm actually going to share a little bit about that in a few minutes, but, um, you know, shred is really just about building healthy habits into your lifestyle. So you can crowd out those unhealthy ones. And so, um, having those simple steps of adding more fruits and vegetables, drinking more water, getting more sleep, exercising, reducing those harmful foods you can start day by day, choice by choice, implementing tools and habits 
that help you stay on course when it comes to sugar, all in a very supportive Facebook group, which is the fun part of this, okay? So Shred does a couple of things here. It starts with the Juice Plus products, which adds 30 fruits, veggies, and berries to your diet every single day. And veggies like kale and broccoli and uh, cabbage and all kinds of those greens that we literally just talked about that helps our body in that detox process. Now, it was scientifically shown to actually reduce insulin in the body. So eating the Juice Plus capsules every single day actually helps our body manage the sugar content in our body, which is super cool. Because what that means is, is our, it is supporting our body and our liver in that healthy detoxing process that our body naturally goes through that Oftentimes our body is so bogged down by, we can't actually do it efficiently. So adding just a simple extra nutrition to your diet can actually boost your body's ability or encourage your body to do what it does naturally and do it efficiently. Um, and then when we look at the complete protein powder, which I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit, that provides a really healthy alternative for when you do have sweet cravings. So earlier I talked about, you know, like, having alternatives to having sweets and like pudding is a really great one. So complete is totally exactly what you need. If you need something that over that helps you overcome your sugar cravings. And I'm going to talk about it in a minute so you can see exactly what it is um, and how specifically it's going to help you with your sugar cravings. Okay. Um, Shred encourages a sugar-free lifestyle, but that doesn't mean you have to be 100% sugar-free, reduced sugar, we know that it's not good for us, but we also know we can't avoid it 100% of the time. So making those intentional choices in a supportive environment can help you lead that healthier lifestyle to the optimal ideal of being sugar-free. Um, and Shred provides loads of support. So meal plans and workouts and recipe books and tips on self-care and tips on sleep and education and support and coaching and celebrations, all kinds of really great, great tools and resources for you to start living your healthy life where you're at, meeting you where you're at. So the Juice Plus capsules, if you are new to our webinars or maybe you're not new and you want to know some more here. <laughs> so our Juice Plus capsules are concentrated nutrition in a capsule or a convenient chewable for kids and of course for the children and all of us adults. So um, if you're not into swallowing capsules, there is a chewable option. Now, the really cool thing is that these are real whole food, concentrated nutrition in a capsule. So there is nothing else. It's all fruits, veggies, berries. And in fact, the omegas actually contain a plant-based omega blend um, of three, five, six, seven, and nine in optimal ratios to support good health, good brain function, good um, eye, hair, and skin, um, reducing inflammation in the body, like all these really great, great, great benefits of adding omegas to the body all in there. Okay. Now the capsules help support your body in that process. They bridge the gap between, you know, what we should be doing every day and what we do do every day when it comes to our nutrition, because realistically, most of us are not eating the recommended seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day. It's really hard to do. And um, basically seven servings of say kale would be seven cups of kale. Most of us don't eat that much. <laughs> um, seven servings of, you know, tomatoes would be three and a half cups. Most of us don't eat that much. And that's just the bare minimum, right? Like we really should be aiming for more than that just because the quality of our new, of our food and our produce is not peak. It's not peak ripeness. It's not peak quality because it's mass produced. It's shipped from far. It's picked before it's ripe. It's not all the nutrition is there that it could be. Um, fortunately with the juice plus capsules is that all of that nutrition and all of that food is actually picked at peak ripeness. So you have the most amount of nutrients that that food is ever going to have all packed into a tiny convenient capsule. Makes it super easy to just say yes to bridging that gap between what you do eat and what you should. Um, the Complete is a plant-based protein blend. This is by far one of my favorite 
favorite additions to my lifestyle um, because it's low glycemic. So it's got 30% of your fiber intake for the day in just one serving. And what that means is that is going to help you not only feel full, but it's going to help you regulate those cravings because there is that fiber that slows down uh, sugar absorption in the body, slows down that carb carbohydrate load that our body undergoes when we consume uh, foods. And the fact that it's vegan, gluten-free, and dairy-free means that it doesn't contain any inflammatory ingredients. So if you are dealing with you know, body pains or digestive issues or skin conditions, this is a nice, clean protein source that's not going to aggravate anything that you're currently dealing with. But the best thing about this, and this is why I absolutely love it, is that it tastes amazing and totally hits the spot when you have a food craving and because it's so versatile, so it's not just a smoothie powder, you can put this into energy balls. I make pudding out of it, literally one serving of that with a splash of plant-based milk and you literally have a, like a pudding. That's way better than any snack pack that you could buy in the grocery store and it's school friendly. So you can send it with your kids to school, which I totally do almost every day. Um, so this is by far one of my favorite ways to you know, have a healthy alternative that's actually going to fuel me but still satisfy that craving that I get every once in a while um so <laughs> this might surprise some of you I'm going to tell you really quickly um how bad my addiction truthfully used to be and I think this is probably something that I don't actually think a lot of you know this story and so I'm going to share it quickly but um it might surprise you because you as most of you know now I don't consume any added sugars in my diet. Um, however, there was a time I used to go grocery shopping every Thursday. That's when the sale flyers came out. I used to go after work. So I would finish work at four o'clock right away. I'd be at the grocery store before it got busy, before it was crowded and crazy. And that would allow me the chance to price match and you know, get my groceries cheaper, use my coupons, all of the nine yards. Okay. But it never failed. Every week I would go into the grocery store store with my produce and while I was in the bread aisle I would grab a package of six honey glazed full donuts like they were full donuts like the size of my fist six of them for a dollar how could I say no they were only a buck and from the time I checked out of the grocery store to the time I drove home which was about 15 minutes I would consume all six of them and then I would hide the container so that I wouldn't get caught. For two years, I did that every day, every Thursday. Needless to say, I did not feel good. I was gaining a lot of weight. My joints were like in so much pain and I was only 25, like I was very young. Um, I had a lot of skin breakouts. I was having hormonal issues. It was really, really bad. And the fact that I would hide the evidence was to show that I was really actually struggling with something and not just, you know, having a little indulgence. Um, when I started living a shred-based lifestyle of eating more fruits and vegetables, taking care of my body, drinking more water, allowing my body to detox through that process, I actually managed to overcome that. And now I do actually live sugar-free. So it's not um, impossible. So if you are, you know, if you're there sitting thinking, you know, you're struggling with sugar or there are ways that it's showing up in your life that you don't want it to, it's totally not impossible for you to feel the way you want to feel and to get rid of it in whatever capacity that looks like for you. It doesn't have to be totally sugar-free. It has to be where you're comfortable. So that's why I want to invite you to participate in our 10-day challenge in October uh, with our Shred community. So if you're already in Shred, congratulations. I cannot wait for our launch call, which I'm going to be um, announcing the date for that soon. Um, but from October 18th to 28th, we are doing a sugar-free challenge. And so we will have uh, the two weeks worth of sugar-free meal plans. We will have live workouts, accountability. There are going to be some really fun challenges um, going out over that 10 day period, some prizes and giveaways, and then of course, another celebration. So if you missed our challenge, um, our shred challenge in September. This is definitely something you're going to want to look into for October.
October because um, we are getting started. And now we have strategically placed this between two holidays. So if you're here in Canada, you know we have our Thanksgiving weekend coming up uh, in a couple of days. And so we have placed this between Thanksgiving and Halloween to give you your best chance of success and to really help set you up with just one weekend, 10 days of some really great education around sugar um, and the accountability that you're going to need in that fun challenge to really set some goals and overcome it. Now, if you're not in our shred community, I highly encourage you to give this go. There is never a better time. These challenges are so much fun. And some of the most common results of the of all of our shred participants is actually craving more fruits and vegetables, healthier weight, better recovery from their workouts, improved sleep and increased energy. Those two are huge. Let me tell you, when you're sleeping better, you are 100% set up for better success every single day in all of your health choices than when you're not sleeping. Healthier hair, skin, or nails, improved digestion, and even an increase in mental clarity. And all of this comes from that combined action of reducing refined sugars, adding more fruits and veggies, drinking more water, being intentional every single day with your health habits. So I want to ask you, are you ready? Do you want to give this a go? Who's ready to finally break their addiction to sugar? If that's you, say yes in the comments. If you are not yet in our shred, um, reach out to the person who invited you here tonight and they will send you all the information that you need in order to join shred. And the only thing that you need is an active order of Juice Plus. That's it. That's it. That's all. Bridging that gap between um, what you do eat and what you should eat, helping your body naturally detox, supporting all of that system, um, reducing that insulin resistance that our body goes through when we consume high levels of sugar, all of that just for the simple cost of your Juice Plus capsules. Now, um, for those of you who are live with us tonight, I'm going to be sending you a Break Your Sugar Addiction guide that recaps all of this information that I just shared with you so you can take it with you and continue on your journey of being more healthier and reducing the sugar in your life also going to be emailing all of you the recording to this. So if you want to rewatch it, you want to go over some of that information, or you want to share this with friends or family that you think need to hear the information or that are need to hear the information, by all means, you are welcome to share it and encourage them to join the shred with you. Because let me tell you, health journeys are 100% way more fun when you have a friend doing it alongside of you. 100%. So thank you all so much for being here tonight. I'm going to head over to the comments and see if we've got any questions.